Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we'll cover how to deploy a highly available Kubernetes cluster using Ketchup and kubebit. So by the end of today's video, you'll learn how to deploy a highly available Kubernetes cluster that is fault tolerance, which means that you can lose a single master node and still have your cluster up and running. We'll use a help utility called Ketchup to help us quickly deploy our server and agent nodes. And then on top of that, we'll use kubefip, which is a service load balancer that'll allow us to um, use leader election, which means that if a uh, server node goes down, it'll uh, fall over to uh, an available server agent. A link uh, to some additional documentation that explains uh, in a lot more detail about uh, what Kube v, uh, VIP is and how to use it. And then I'll also link to a GitHub repository that has the utility Ketchup that we'll be using. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. There are some prerequisites that are required. For today's example, I'm gonna be using five Linux uh, virtual machines. Uh, each one is statically configured uh, with its own unique IP address. We'll also need a floating IP address. This is the virtual IP address that we'll be using to access the cluster. And the utility that we're going to be using, uh, Ketchup, actually deploys the server and agent nodes over SSH. So we'll need to make sure that we copy our SSH keys into each one of those virtual machines. So to save some time, I've gone ahead and already installed Ketchup. Uh, but if you haven't installed it yet, you can follow these simple instructions uh, in this documentation that I'll link in the video description below. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to sign into a Linux machine, install Ketchup, and then copy our SSH public key into each one of those nodes. So to do that, we simply can execute these commands. So I am going to copy my SSH key into each one of those worker nodes. So in my case, as I mentioned, I have five of those. So we can very quickly copy those over. And what this allows us to do is to uh, allow Ketchup to be able to run remote commands without requiring a username or password. Okay, so I make sure that I type the password correctly. Okay, and there we go. So now we've got all five machines with our public uh, SSH key. So if we head back into the documentation, the first thing that we're gonna do is deploy the first K3S server node. Um, using Ketchup, it is very straightforward. We will call the Ketchup binary. We'll specify some arguments. In this case, we're going to say that the IP address for the first node is going to be on this dot twenty one. We're going to use the user uh, in my case the mystery, but please make sure you change this out with the user that matches uh, the one that you have created. We'll use sudo, and the one key thing to take away from here is the TLS SAN. This is the IP address of the floating IP that we'll be using to connect to the cluster. This will be the IP that will move around in the event of a server node going down. So we can go ahead and copy this big block of code here, and we can just go ahead and execute that. So K3S is very lightweight, doesn't require a lot of resources. So each one of my virtual machines is just running two vCPUs and two gigabytes of RAM. It also only takes just a few minutes for it to install. So you'll see here in just a few moments that the K3 cluster has already been deployed. Uh, and the output tells us uh, where the kube config file is located uh, and a couple of commands just to uh, ensure that the server node is indeed up and running. So let's go ahead and copy this kube config path. We will go ahead and use the context uh, that we just created. And then we can go ahead and take a look to make sure that the node is running. And we can see here that it's still on its way up, but if we give it just a, another minute or two here, not actually even a minute, just a few more seconds, uh, we'll see that um, it'll come back up here very quickly. So there we go. We can see that it is now up and we're not seeing any errors. So now we can proceed to the next step. The next step is that we want to uh, make sure that we install the RBAC um, YAML file that is provided by kubefip. So this will set up all the role space control that is required to get kubefip up and running. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, there's detailed documentation on kubefip, uh, which I'll link below. Uh, to make this easy, we've gone ahead and uh, made all the commands available in this documentation. 
So let's copy the RBAC YAML. Let's apply that. And once that's been applied, we'll uh, then need to log into the first server node that we created. So in our case, that is the 1.21 will become root, and then we'll pull the latest version of the cube FIP container. So let's go ahead and SSH into this machine. Let's become root, and then we'll pull the latest version of cube FIP. Okay, this will just take a few seconds, and there we go. We can see that that is completed. And then the next thing that we need to do is we'll, uh, to make things easier, we'll create an alias for the command kubefip, uh, which uh, again, I've uh, created here and documented. You can read about what all these um, parameters mean, uh, and you can adjust uh, to meet your needs. But since this is just a quick demo, let's just go ahead and copy what we've already pre-created, and we'll paste that in to our shell. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a manifest. And this manifest is going to be a type daemon set because we want it to run across all our server nodes. We're going to specify the network interface. So make sure that you update the network interface to match one that matches your interface on your virtual machine. Here, the important thing to keep in mind is for the address, we need to use the floating IP. In our case, that is 1.20. We're going to use uh, a control plane, leader election, and then we're going to take the output of the manifest that's created and automatically tee it into the server location under manifests, which means Kubernetes, uh, in this case, K3S, will automatically pick it up. So let's copy this block of code. Let's go in and copy that. And we can see that that now has been installed. So if we jump back over here again, we should now be able to uh, log out of our first node and then rejoin, uh, rather create uh, our second and third server nodes. So we can copy this command. Uh, again, it's quite straightforward. We're going to use catchup to join uh, our second node, which is running on dot 22. We're going to use our username with sudo. We're going to use a stable version. We're going to specify the server IP. Now again, here we're going to be using the IP address that belongs to the floating or the virtual IP. Um, and then we're going to disable traffic and the service load balancer. Again, these are just specific settings that I'm using. You should go ahead and uh, use settings that uh, meet your needs. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we can, oh, we never signed out of the, the first node. So let's go ahead and sign out and then rerun that command again. And we can see that this is now being deployed to that second node. So while that's happening, what we can actually do is, um, we can export that kube config file again, and we can watch the node as it joins. So let's export the kube config, and then let's just run a watch on kubectl get nodes, and we can see that uh, currently we only see the one server node, uh, but within a few moments here you'll see that the second node has joined and it is now ready. Now we can add the third node. So we can copy this. It's the same exact command. So we're just doing a rinse and repeat. We've just changed the IP address to match the IP address of the third node. And this again, in a few moments, will be connecting um, or rather joining into the, the cluster itself. So let's give that a, a moment and you can see that it should show up here on the right hand side and become ready and available. And there we go. So it looks like it's finished installing and we can see that we are now ready with our three master nodes. And if we actually ping the IP address of that virtual IP, we can now see that it is responding. So this means that the, uh, the virtual IP is indeed working. So the one adjustment that we will want to make is when we originally deployed the first node, it copied over the cube config. And if we take a look at that, we'll see that it's got the IP address of that first node. So in order for us to use the virtual IP address, we want to make sure that we update this with the correct IP address. In our case, it's going to be .20. And then we can go ahead and export that cube config again. And then let's just run a cube CTL get nodes just to make sure that everything works as expected and it does. 
So now we can go ahead and attach as many agent nodes or worker nodes that we like. So just for this example, I've got two nodes that I'm going to use as agent nodes. They're going to be running on dot 24 and dot 25. So let's go ahead and copy this command here. We can paste it. And then if we run that watch command again, we can now see that as soon as this agent node finishes installing, it'll show up on the right hand side and its roles will be non, which means that it is a, an agent node. And this is where we would deploy our workloads. So again, we just need to copy the same exact command, adjust the IP addresses for the new uh, agent node. In this case, it's 25. And then we should have a fully functional Kubernetes cluster that is highly available. It's got three server or master nodes, two agent nodes where our workloads will be deployed, uh, and everything is managed through a floating IP address. So a quick way to uh, identify which one of these uh, agent, sorry, rather the server nodes or master nodes has the IP address uh, for the VIP, we can take a look at the pods. So if we do a kubectl and get pods, and let's take a look at all the pods, we're looking for any one of these uh, cube VIP pods. Again, remember we deployed a daemon set, so we'll have three in our case. Let's go ahead and take a look at the logs on this particular one. So if we do a kubectl get, sorry, it's kubectl logs, specify the pod name, we want to look inside of the cube system namespace. And let's just go ahead and grep for leader. If we spell it correctly, it will help. So we can see here that the Kate's master 01 is what uh, is currently assumed the role of the leadership. So in order to test uh, that our cube VIP is working as expected and that it is um, highly available, let's go back to the console over here and start that ping command again. So we're going to be watching the uh, the virtual IP address, and we can see here that the the master node, uh, or in, in this case, Kate's master one is the leader. So let's SSH into the master, and what we're going to do is we're just going to shut this down. So if we issue a shutdown halt now this uh, virtual machine will shut down. So this could simulate a unexpected outage of that particular node. And you can see that that ping has stopped responding, but it just stopped for just a few seconds. Um, and automatically it has now gone ahead and picked up the, uh, or elected another leader. And we can quickly verify which um, agent or rather server has become the, the leader. So if we take a look at the, uh, the pods, and we'll want to do a full kubectl. So let's take a look at this pod. So let's do kubectl logs. And we'll want to grep for leader again. And we can see that now node 3 has taken over the leadership role. So again, hopefully this was helpful. It's a very quick demonstration, but this is a great example uh, for you to learn or to set up in your home lab. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful. If these are the types of videos that you enjoy, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be notified of any new videos that I release. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and I'll be sure to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Thank you.